Hello, welcome back everybody to DJ Tutorials. Today we are going to be handling the second part of creating the Master Sword, which is going to be the handle, the little jewel that's on there, and the hilt. If you haven't done part one yet, please go and do that one because you won't really know what we're doing at this point. The link is going to be down in the video description. Also, if you want to get the project file downloads, you can follow the link down in the video description. That'll go to my Gumroad and you can get it from there. Now, let's get started on working on the rest of the Master Sword. All right, so the next thing we are going to do here once you're done with your blade is we are going to be making this part of the handle right here. And we're going to keep this fairly simple. We're just going to make this sort of spherical here, and it's going to come down, and the end over here is going to be a little bit more or less spherical as well. Again, we only have the top view, so we can be a little bit creative on how some of this is done here. And again, this is more of a practice. This is not to make a proper real, real, in quotes, real item that's going to go into a video game. This is a practice for people who really need to just get their hands dirty with doing some modeling and do it relatively quick with some good ideas. So we're going to just make a cube here. I'm in object mode. I'm going to press control two, and that's going to allow us to have this subdivision surface modifier here. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to scale that up. And this next part is a little bit weird. We're going to, you know, use this cube to make this spherical shape here. And we're also going to make this part of the handle. We're not going to start on this part here yet. We're just going to pull this down. So what we're going to do before we start to, you know, extrude things out and all that, we're going to hit I to insert. And we're just going to scale this down. We're going to move this down to about there. Go to the top view. Hit E. It's going to lock it down on that normal axis on the Z for that normal. But if we press G at this point and then lock it on Y, that is the global setting here. And we're actually going to scale this down a little bit because there is a little bit of a taper effect from here to there. So we're just going to sort of make that into a shape there by tapering that just a little bit. We're going to pull it down a little bit more just like that. Next thing we're going to do is there are these little, uh, these lighter sections, which I'm assuming are supposed to be like, uh, there's these sort of like, um, I don't know, like ribbed look or something. So we are going to count the number of lighter shapes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Press control R, then 11 to make 11 of those. Right click, and then we are going to press control B to bevel, hold shift, and then bring it out. And it's going to be something like this. Okay. And when I'm doing this, I can see that it looks like we're not quite getting one. This one up here seems to be getting missed. Now, it's not because we're not moved up there, because I can see that these, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, so I'm actually going to do one more. Let's just do one more. Okay. So let's do 12. Is anyone really going to care if we do 12? Probably not, you know. So let's just make this like that there. And then once we have those, we are going to press E to extrude, right click. And we're going to press S to scale. And then we're going to do shift Y. Okay. And what that does as we pull this out, you can see that it's scaling everywhere except on the length. Okay. So it's going everywhere except for this direction. So S shift Y, we're going to pull that up something like this maybe. And when we look at the solid view here and we turn off our overlay, you can see that now we have that going on there, which looks pretty darn cool, I think. So let's turn back on our overlays, go back into edit mode, press three so that we can get the face select here. Then I am going to hit E to extrude. We're going to pull this down to about, I don't know, there. Scale that out a little bit, maybe like this. E to extrude, pull that down. E one more time, pull it out to about there. And we can start to have fun a little bit. I might pull this in, maybe add a little bevel, not a bevel, but just add a loop cut there and sort of control what the shaping might look like at the edge there. You can take these, and if we add creases, you can try to square some of this off, like this, if you like. You can add some loop cuts and just sort of play around with the shaping. Using those other methods that I showed you up in this area here. And also 
for this area here. Go ahead and do some adjustments, make some changes. You can add some stuff. This doesn't have to be 100% perfect. You can do your own iteration. The Master Sword has gone through many different iterations throughout its history. You can make this, as long as we're using this as sort of like a guiding point or a starting point, you can sort of make this handle a little bit more unique and interesting. Go ahead and take the time to do that right now. And then I will do it on my own and I will show you what I end up doing after that. So take the time right now, make some adjustments, change stuff up. You can shade this with auto smooth. You can shade it to smooth and then add some creases, whatever you want to do, add some bevels. And I will see you after you've played around a little bit with this. All right, folks, this is what mine looks like. So you can see here, I added this little bit right in here. So that was, it's kind of like a little fun thing. It's a little bit visible on the, uh, the rendering, the 2D rendering that I'm using as a reference. And this is how I handled the very, very bottom, the, uh, I think it's called the pommel section. Um, I don't know that much of the anatomy of the sword. And you can see I left the bottom a little bit rounded like that. And this is basically what it's going to look like for that part. So once you are done with that, we can continue on with the rest of the sword. All right, then. So now we are ready to do the section right here, this hilt section, the sort of like guard section for your hands of the sword. And this does look a little bit weird. And if you look at other stuff that people have made, different sort of renderings, they have an idea about how they sort of handled this. And in the video games, there's a little bit of a different way that they handled it than how I am going to do it. But you are more than welcome to do this however you'd like. But I'm just going to show you how I like to do it when I'm sort of playing around like this and making my own version of this stuff. So we're going to start off with a simple plane edit mode. I'm going to press one to get into the vertex mode. And you'd probably have guessed it. We're going to have a mirrored section over here. So I'm going to split this here. I'm going to delete these. I'm going to move this down on the Y axis, and I'm just going to start doing this from here and we can add the modifier for our mirror and we can go ahead and turn the clipping on right now. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make this part right here, the part that sort of connects to the sword right in here. So we're going to take that, we're going to move that there I'm going to take this, we're going to move it here to make that sort of V shape right there. And we're going to take this here and move it up like this. Now, if you're thinking, oh, well, what about what we learned before regarding edge flow and all that kind of stuff? Yes, that's always important. And you can do that. You can make sure that when you're building things out, you have that sort of edge flow and all that sort of stuff. And this time on this particular one, what I am going to do is I am just going to follow it a little bit simpler. Okay, so what we're going to do instead of doing all that edge flow stuff down here, the really complex part, it comes in when we start doing this right in here. And we could make this two separate objects and we could make this top part one separate one and the bottom one a separate one and put it together. But we're going to keep this a little bit simple. So we're just going to extrude that edge there and we're going to extrude this this way like that. OK, and then we're going to take this one and we're going to extrude it up here. We're going to rotate it. We're going to scale it. We're just going to get this generally set up where we need this to be, just sort of blocking in our object. You can see there we have a sort of three dimensional space that we're building here where this is flat and this is coming up like this. You got to think, you know, blocking in, we don't have to get all the details. We're just sort of building this out, thinking about how we're going to be putting this together. We don't have to be too overly concerned with a whole bunch of stuff because there's not a whole lot of stuff. If we have to scrap it and start over again, we can do that. You know, it's not it's not that hard sometimes to just start over from scratch. Don't force something, you know, don't force it. You got to feel it. OK, so we're going to go up like this. We're going to look at it in this way and we're going to need to add a little bit of a bend here to keep at least some sort of similar shape to what's going on here. And once we have this sort of set where we want it to be, we have to look at this here. So these are sort of like a in three dimensional space, the brighter spots we can assume are coming up towards us going up this way. And the dark areas are going away from us or down inside of the piece. And if we go to solid mode, we can sort of, you know, visualize what is this going to look like once we really start trying to build this out. Okay. And how we can do this, how we can make this into those uh, these little rippled or ruffled shapes here is we could just add 
some loop cuts just like this. And we can select those and we can bevel those out like this. And we can extrude those down a bit. Now you're going to see that there's a problem here. We're going to end up with these little things here. And those are going to be a problem. So we want to delete those edges because those should just be going straight down into the piece like that. And that's kind of the shape that we have right now. And the shape that's coming off over here, you can see that it's sort of like connecting right into the blade, and then it just sort of flattens out. So if we take this edge, we pull this up on Z, we can get more of a winged shape there. If you need to go into isolation mode, you can press backslash like this on your number pad, and now we can just sort of see it from this angle here. And what we want to do is turn this on so we can mirror it down there. And if we extrude, lock it on Z, pull it down, we can sort of take a look at how this is shaping up. And this is basically what it's starting to look like. We have connected that down there, and there's this little bit of a gap right in here. So let's see what we can do about this. Now, if we take off clipping, we take that section, pull it up on Z, just like this, and then take this, extrude, lock it on Z, pull it straight down. Ah, let's turn back on clipping grab again, pull it down on Z. You can see now we have that connected. And then this right here, we can merge with M at center. And if you had any sort of like points right here that were not connected, merge them together that way. And now we have a solid object with no weird doubled vertices. And if we hit A, we can then press M by distance, just in case you can see there are removed nine vertices. And now we have this shape here. So let's go into regular object mode. So I just got out of edit mode and you can see here, there's a little bit of an issue on the back, right? We need to pull this up, turn off clipping, pull this up, got a similar situation right in here. We're gonna take this, we're going to turn back on clipping, extrude, lock it on Z, pull it down and take a look at what we've done here. It's looking pretty good, all right? Now we haven't added that that subdivision surface modifier. So I just did that. And now we can just sort of take a look at how things are going. Now, what am I going to say? I'm going to tell you to take a moment, go inside of here. You can do auto smooth. You can shade it to regular smooth and then add all of your, uh, your creases. You can add loop cuts. You can add your bevel weights. If you want to use a bevel modifier, you can go in here and start to make adjustments as needed. And I will pause the recording at this point, and I will allow you to take a moment to adjust this, and I will show you all of the changes that I did and how I went about doing this particular thing. All right, so go ahead and do that, and I will see you momentarily. So here it is. You can see that it's basically done. If we take a look at it, all I really did was add a couple edge creases and move some points around. I softened a little bit of an area over here by moving some things around. Pulled this down a little bit more to make those valleys a little bit more sort of like carved in. And that's basically all I did. I just moved a couple things around and anything that's inside of here, you can see it's gonna be covered up by the rest of the handle down here. All right, so the next thing that we need to make here once we're done with all of the handle is we need to make this little gem or whatever the heck this thing is right here. Maybe it's the thing that gives the Master Sword power. I don't know, because I've actually watched a lot of people play these games. I've never actually played it myself because I don't have the patience for games like that. But instead of worrying about that, let's go ahead and make that piece there. So we're gonna take this piece right here. We're gonna scale this down. We're going to move it on the Y axis. And what do you think we're going to do here, guys? We are going to split this. We are going to delete this right here. We are going to add, generate a mirror modifier. Let's turn back on our screencast keys. And I am going to move this over like this. I'm going to move this over like this. And then we are going to turn on clipping. And we're going to take that middle piece there. And of course, you can always go into isolation mode like this. It's a little bit hard to see some of this, but I am used to looking at things in this way. You can also turn on solid, the solid mode, and then turn this on here so you can see through the 3D pieces like this or the 3D objects. And you can sort of move this up. And again, what I really want to stress with this, what I really want to stress is we are playing. Okay, do you know what I mean? We're playing around. We are not worried about meeting a scheduled deadline. We are not worried about somebody uh, telling us how bad our thing's going to be or 
how inaccurate it is or anything like that. What we're basically doing here is we are just messing around. We are making something because it's fun. I'm not concerned if there's anybody in the chat or in the uh, comments down there saying, you know, that's not what it is anymore. It doesn't look like that. I don't care if it really looks like that anymore. I am just making something because I want to, because it's fun. And I'm going to put it on somewhere and I'm going to get some likes, you know, I'm going to feel good about myself after I'm done. And you, you may think that I'm being a little bit sarcastic. I'm not really. A lot of people are too concerned about what someone else is going to think about whatever it is that you made. Okay. And sometimes we want to, you know, play, we want to make some stuff, make ourselves happy, get into a better mind space or head space or, you know, put something out on Instagram or something like that because we feel good about something that we made. It doesn't need to be accurate. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be something that you made, right? Because that's what gives it value, okay? So we're going to make that. It's done because it's that easy, right? The only thing we really need to do is add the mirror for the bottom. Shabam. And there we go. Now we have the entire sword made and we can start doing materials so let's get in and start making some materials for this guy but that's gonna have to wait until next time folks thank you all so much for going through this project with me hopefully you are enjoying it please leave a comment like and subscribe all that cool stuff it really helps me out and if you are interested in the discord or becoming a patron all the links are down below in the video description Thanks so much to my supporters, all my patrons, and all my subscribers. All you guys really make it possible for me to create these videos. And I will see you all next time when we start to finish up this project.